Hi, I'm Dr. Eric Westman with another episode of Learn with Dr. Westman. This episode is entitled, Should You Check Your Blood Sugars? Well, more and more people are coming to me checking their blood sugars when in the past they wouldn't have because the availability of meters and, and even these new continuous glucose monitors make it simple uh, to uh, almost easy to check the blood sugar. Um, a continuous glucose monitor is a little disc that you insert. It's a, easy to insert, it's painless basically, and you leave it in there for a couple weeks and it continuously checks the blood glucose, gives you a reading about every five minutes or so, depending on the version. And it, you know, you can actually drill down to I had breakfast at this time and here's what happened to my blood glucoses because if you link it to your smartphone or you use the little monitor they give with the device, it will actually record and give you a graph, uh, almost like you know, a research setting graph of your own glucose over the course of the day and then over the course of two weeks. Sounds great, doesn't it? Well. <laughs> um, you know, if you have diabetes, a condition of elevated blood glucose, and uh, you're on medication for it, uh, you're probably either checking the blood sugar, it's called a finger stick, where you actually have a little needle called a lancet, and you check a little bead of blood comes up, and you use a strip and put it in your machine. That's the classic way to check the blood glucose, and, you know, it hurts over time. You know, you're supposed to use the side so it doesn't hurt as much and but so some people would come in with their fingers like just all you know uh, pricked so much that that they're they're um they hurt and uh so you know no one wants to check blood sugars like that so trying to make the mon monitoring of diabetes easier uh, and the new technology is to use one of these continuous glucose monitors or cgm for short and uh, other, the brand names might be Dexcom or Libre, and then different version, Libre, Libre 2, other types of monitors that um, may be out there. But basically, you insert the little catheter into the arm. It, it's designed to stay there for two weeks, it has some adhesive on it. You can wear it in the shower, and uh, swimming causes some trouble with it sometimes so um, you don't want to swim with it but so basically now how do you get one uh, basically you, you can measure your own blood sugars even if you don't have diabetes by getting one of these and I, I think over time it will become available without a prescription right now in the US it is a uh, prescription based product so you have to get a doctor who to bless your, the idea of you checking your blood sugars, um, the, it, it's not uh, free, so it's not paid for insurance uh, unless your doctor prescribes it and then has a diagnosis that's codable for it. But you can pay $100 at a pharmacy for a two-week, uh, basically two-week supply of the, the uh, um, Dexcom or, or Libre, the CGM itself, um, which, you know, that's, that's not too bad. If it depends on, you know, it's out of reach for some people and affordable for others. Uh, but um, now the, the main question that remains to me, having seen a lot of people using the CGM and watching their own blood sugars, the question that remains is why? Why would you want to do this? <laughs> We know that eating carbohydrates raises the blood sugar, and the more sugar and carbohydrate you have, the higher the blood sugar goes. Um, there, some people are just curious, or maybe they don't believe the science that's been over and over and over publications showing blood sugar going up, and, and a doctor telling you, well, you know, your blood sugar will go up if you eat that apple. Um, but so if you are curious, you want to know, you can actually see your blood sugars every five minutes throughout the day. Um, it's not, I would say you have to be a little bit tech savvy in order to wear one. 
uh, or be trained in how to do it. Yet, uh, it works best with a smartphone, but it does come with a meter itself. But um, I would say some of my patients can't figure out how to use it. So you want to have someone show you how to use it. And, and then, it, you know, um, a caution I would say in using uh, continuous glucose monitors, don't freak out. Don't get upset if your blood sugars aren't totally normal throughout the day. That's pretty rare. I mean, you have to be doing a keto diet, meaning one that, without carbohydrates in it, in order to get this kind of flat line blood sugar 80 all day long. In fact, some people with uh, on a keto diet notice their blood sugars go down to the 70s and 60s, which in the past was thought to be bad. But now we know that that's just part of being on a keto diet. You can get super low blood sugars and you feel fine. So yeah, ideally you would have someone to ask about what does this blood glucose mean and not just have to worry about it on your own. Um, a blood glucose that goes up just a little bit, say to 105, 110, 120 even, and then comes back down. It's not something I get worried about. That can happen even in the first thing in the morning when you get up, when, when growth hormone goes up uh, or cortisol goes up, it can raise the blood glucose. I think the current thinking is that it's growth hormone, even though classically I've taught, I was taught that it was cortisol. But anyway, a hormone level goes up to raise the blood glucose. You didn't eat anything, but your blood sugar might be highest in the morning. Don't worry about that. Um, and uh, I mean, so there's like these early adopters thinking that the lower the blood sugar, the better. Uh, and if you can just check on yourself, uh, well, it, it's not trivial to check it. And although the, the, now there are these sort of uh, people that uh, it's called the quantified self who, who want to measure everything. And, and, and so it gets almost to the level of being ridiculous where you might ask someone, well, how are you feeling? And they start checking the, I feel fine. <laughs> Meaning all of the parameters are, are normal. It's almost like a, a computerized feeling of, you know, if all my numbers are fine, then I'm fine. Well, how many times have I seen someone change their view of the world by the number on the scale? <laughs> there are even signs that says, uh, I will not have a bad day just because there's a number on my scale. So of course numbers can make you feel worried or feel better, but I'm talking about the feeling of being able to do what you want to do, getting out and being, uh, uh, you know, enjoying life, uh, going beyond just having all the numbers in a, a certain, you know, normal range. Uh, so yes, you can check your blood glucoses, um, probably be easier over time. I mean, I, I'm told every few years that they're just, they're close to the the watch that checks the glucose and everyone will be wearing. If, if everyone, if my watch can measure my glucose, why wouldn't I do it? I mean, I, I, um, I'll even probably be checking my glucose and I don't normally, I don't even check my ketone levels because I know what they're going to be. I mean, they're, they're going to be where they need to be. Uh, uh, but, um, so th those are just some thoughts about the, the technology is there, but, um, uh, another thing, once I got into the using the Libre, and or, uh, they kind of uh, the the technology is not uh, solid over the first two weeks. It's like the, the the there's a drift that occurs as the second week happens, and so not all of these monitors are are the same as the others. Some are, are higher quality uh, that you you could actually base your insulin dose on. Others aren't. But so, you know, if you, for kicks, wanted to get one of these lesser expensive ones that are lesser quality, it, it, it's probably okay. But you, again, you might have to have someone to talk to about, should I worry about this reading? Uh, uh, is a blood sugar of 60, if I'm on a keto diet, okay. And if you're feeling fine, yeah, it's fine. If a blood sugar of 200, uh, so if, if you're measuring it and you don't know, you can go to the, the internet that the blood sugar of 150, 160, 200 after a meal, that's getting into the range of prediabetes and diabetes, especially if it's happening 
over time. So, you know, you might be able to diagnose a problem that hadn't been picked up by getting a glucose monitor even, but um, I would weigh and balance the risks of finding out a number that you're not sure what it means. It might cause some anxiety until you get it checked out. Um, but as far as the, the um, wearable wearability, is they're easy to put on and wear and work with an iPhone or, or the monitor that they give uh, when you purchase the machines. So I'm kind of conflicted as to whether you should use one or not. Uh, it depends on your personality, your, your ability to afford them. And I can accomplish uh, tremendous changes in someone's health, reversal of chronic medical conditions and prevention of them without using a CGM at all. Uh, as uh, um, I said once on a, on a stage it was someone who was talking about the glucose monitors and their program, I said, well, you know, you can fly a plane without, a, without an altimeter. You can actually, you know, help someone improve their lifestyle and, and lower the blood glucoses and, and the weight without a machine, without a monitor. We've been doing that for ages. And people have been flying airplanes without altimeters. Uh, if you grow up with one and think that's the only way to do it, then you wouldn't know. But uh, we can actually reverse and prevent these chronic conditions without a CGM. So uh, don't let that be a barrier for you to try one of these uh, pro uh, approaches because they're not necessary. And uh, really, I guess to put it, they're kind of a curiosity. Unless you have diabetes, you should be measuring. But if you don't, uh, it's just going to validate what you've learned, uh, which is carbohydrates raise the blood glucose. Uh, but you might learn something uh, specific to you, uh, how going for a walk after a meal changes your blood glucose, uh, how um, exercise or fasting affects your blood glucose. But um, I think it's going to be small incremental knowledge based uh, beyond just the limit of carbohydrate being the basis for healthy living. Hope that's helpful. This is Dr. Westman, and be sure to like subscribe and, and ring the notification bell. Check out our class on sugar and food addiction at, at Afterlife Academy. Be sure to look below for our latest free guide to help you on your health journey. And why not send this to a friend, let a friend know about what you're doing, or uh, it's a grassroots movement, really. Don't wait for it to come from the top down. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell, and check out AdapterLifeAcademy.com.